What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited. First of all, I want to say thank you. Big shout out to Alpha for letting me use his house to do this deck profile. But I'm also excited because uh, we're showing off one of my favorite decks from the GX era and it is an anime deck and that is Crystal Beast, specifically because Overdrive Turbo is so powerful because of this one brand new card, Golden Rule, that just came out in Battles of Legend. Now this card is absolutely insane and I'm gonna get into it when we get into the profile, but before we do, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. We just hit 11K, which is kind of a big milestone. So thank you guys, I appreciate you guys. So with that being said, um, let's get right into it, okay? So this is Overdrive Turbo. Uh, I know typically that people like to play the Conclave Control, but we really wanna summon this big boy over here. He's insane going first, he's insane going second. You can OTK with him, you can clear boards and white boards with him going first. It's just absolutely insane. So to do that, we have to be playing the names. And of course, we're playing three Sapphire Pegasus, the most important name is your best normal summon of the deck. Uh, Ruby Carbuncle now is at two because Ruby honestly has become one of the most powerful cards in the deck with Golden Rule as well. So I will actually explain Golden Rule now because I feel like with Ruby, it's the most uh, fitting. So essentially how this card works is one, it's always treated as a crystal spell or trap or a crystal card. And that's really important because you guys are gonna see that this deck is very consistent and the reason for that is, is because all the searchers search for each other which means you're always gonna have access to something like golden rule and some of your other cards and this card specifically honestly with any name it's really powerful but specifically with ruby carbuncle it's insane because what this card does is it places two of your crystal beasts in your spell and trap card zone so it does that first it does that before you do anything else and then you can special summon a crystal beast either from your hand or from your graveyard so if you have ruby in your hand you can essentially, what you can do is you can put two Sapphire, for example, in your spell and trap card zone, summon the Ruby, Ruby effect will down trigger, summon two more, and then you get both Sapphire effects and then you can go from there. So you guys can imagine how much it can combo. So that's why this card is absolutely insane. Again, it's good with any name, but with Ruby specifically, it's insane. And then, so because we are playing the Overdrive Turbo, we of course have to play one of each of the other names. So we're only playing one because these ones don't really do anything for you. You have to play them, of course, for the names. On top of that, if you draw them with Golden Rule, it's still not bad. Like it's still not the worst thing in the world, but you definitely don't want to draw these ones. These ones are like the quote unquote bad ones, right? An eighth name that we now have is Zenith. Now Zenith is not uh, a new card or I guess, the TCG name is Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon. So the really cool thing is it has Crystal Beast in the name, which means that all the Crystal Beast things, like the fusion stuff and the extra deck stuff, need seven names. This is an eighth name now, which makes it really easy to get to that. On top of that, this is an OTK button for you. Like it's a card that just in the battle phase has its own shenanigans. On top of that, 3K pushes for a lot of damage. So Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon is really important. And then we're playing two Rainbow Dragon. So the reason we're playing two Rainbow Dragon where I know a lot of decks want to play one because it's again, a brick in the deck. And this one is actually not so much because first of all, you're playing all the names so you can actually hard summon rainbow dragon and in testing one time i uh, i legitimately summoned rainbow dragon and attacked for game that was like a legit thing so rainbow dragon at two is not horrible but on top of that you really need your crystal beast uh, rainbow dragon here the zenith to resolve and so if you're only playing one and let's say you draw the one rainbow dragon it becomes an issue because a lot of your combos won't be able to resolve if you have this so i like playing the second one because even if we draw one we can still resolve this and have combos right so this is it for the crystal beast names i wouldn't change this up at all maybe three ruby funny enough just because a uh, golden rule is insane but there's just so much consistency in this deck that i think two Ruby is perfectly fine. So that's it for the Crystal Beast monsters. Moving on to the Crystal Beast spells. I don't want to go too much in depth with them because they're all essentially just searchers and consistency, but three golden rule, of course. We got three golden bridge or rainbow bridge of the heart. This card is absolutely insane. Like, again, I don't want to go too much in depth with them, but this gives you an extra normal summon, gives you a pop or, or a bounce technically. It just, it's so good. So you have to be playing three of this. And of course, like all these cards right here are just searchers. This searches any crystal spell or trap, aka any of these or, or golden rule specifically here. This will search a crystal beast monster from your deck to your hand. So crystal bond plus golden rules like full combo because you're getting your ruby carbuncle you have three awakening of the crystal ultimate now for this one you specifically have to reveal an ultimate crystal card and rainbow dragon counts as an ultimate crystal so that's why if you're playing two and if you draw the one it's not the worst thing in the world because this is now live so that's really powerful in its own and again so these are all just consistency cards for you and this is kind of like a consistency card but kind of like an extender as well so crystal beacon is one of the og crystal cards um this card is kind of insane so it special summons a crystal beast monster from your deck but you have to have two or more crystal beasts in your spell and trap card zone so the reason this is really powerful is because if you open this with a golden rule and let's say you don't open the ruby carbuncle right because remember how earlier i was saying how ruby carbuncle plus golden rule is full combo because you have two sapphire etc etc well with this card what it lets you do is if you don't open ruby 
you can place two, summon a different name, if it's a topaz, if it's an amber, it doesn't matter what you summon. Then you can go crystal beacon and then that's gonna let you summon ruby and then you'll have the full combo regardless. So that's why crystal beacon is just one of those cards that's kind of like an extender for you. So yeah, again, super consistent and, and you have the extenders in the deck. This can also special summon. Consistency is, is absolutely crazy. And then the last crystal card we're playing is the one crystal miracle. So crystal miracle is really good because if you do open combo, within your combo you don't actually have to search like the golden rule or any of that you can actually search a crystal miracle instead and crystal miracle is just an omni negate so it's really cool because essentially if you are setting up a board turn one and you're afraid of dark ruler this kind of stops it so you don't lose the dark ruler anymore and it's searchable within the deck and just so easy to get off so it's really powerful that's it for these spell and traps for the crystal beast cards again just super consistent and then they push for a lot of like you know um, again, it's it, not just the consistency, but it just pushes for a lot of like your combos and helps seal OTK as well. Beacon's also really good for the OTK. And then we're playing cards that can help us break boards. And if we're forced to go second, which is really powerful because this deck also going second is really good because this guy can just OTK on his own. But I also wanted cards that would play good going first. And um, these were the best cards that I chose. So uh, let me explain these ones just a little bit. These are my choices for our hand traps slash non-engine cards. So the reason I'm playing Imperm is because of course, you know, we all know Imperm going first you can just set it going second it's a board breaker droplet specifically i actually chose to play in crystal beast and i think droplet and crystal beast so it makes so much sense over other decks because droplet is essentially like dark ruler no more in the sense of it'll break monster boards but the really cool thing about droplet is you can drop the crystal beast names from your hand to the graveyard which now means you have the crystal beast names already in the graveyard set up for you so if you do quote unquote brick on those names you can get rid of them and break your opponent's board at the same time so it's really powerful in that sense but another thing this does is Fenrir going first. Of course, we all know how powerful Fenrir is. Going first and second, right? Going second, this helps you break boards. Going first, it's just a kind of disruption for you. And so if you go Fenrir, activate effect, search a Fenrir, it means that now you have droplet fodder, right? If you don't have anything else to pitch, you at least know you have one Fenrir that you've searched that's in your hand that you can now just pitch off of droplet, right? So this card, I think specifically in this deck is just so, so powerful. So that's why I like the droplet and then Fenrir, like I said, going first, going second is very powerful. So all of these cards are good going first. All of these cards are good going second. And that's why I chose to play these nine specifically. And then lastly, we're playing three Pot of Prosperity for more consistency just to see cards, especially going second, seeing these are really powerful. So it's not so much the Crystal Beast consistency with these, it's just seeing the non-Crystal Beast stuff. And then going first, of course, it baits any hand traps. And then one called by the Grave, of course. So I think the main deck here, if I'm not mistaken, is 42 cards or something like that. It's either 42 or 44, I can't remember. But the reason I don't mind playing 42 or 44 above 40 in this deck is again, because all the Crystal Beast names that are not Ruby and not Sapphire are bricks. And then you're always gonna be able to, with your spells, search whatever cards that you need to kind of sculpt your hand. And then you have Prosperity, which is now gonna also help you sculpt your hand, right? So I like playing the more than 40 because I don't wanna open hands of like Amber, uh, Amethyst, Cat, Tiger. Like I don't wanna open three names, like that's really bad. So I like playing over 40. And again, just super consistent because you're always gonna get to what you wanna get to. So that's it for the main deck. Again, it's either 42 or 44, I can't really remember. Um, for the extra deck here, this is a little bit more self-explanatory. We're playing through two of the Overdrive as well as one Overdragon. These are kind of your OTK cards. I don't need to explain these too much, but essentially what this card does is you can banish it and, and pretty much gets rid of all cards on the field. Um, so going first, you set this up and then you pretty much break entire boards with this. It's kind of like a Zeus, kind of, right? It's not exactly a Zeus, but it's kind of like a Zeus. But then on top of that, after it does that, you can summon Crystal Beast names with different names from your Banish Zone or your Graveyard, et cetera, et cetera. So this is where you can summon like Sapphire, Sapphire, Zenith, or Sapphire, Zenith, all, all your big names, and then you can push for a game, right? If not, you can make it again on your turn three, which is absolutely insane. So that's why these cards are all really powerful. And then because this deck can put a lot of bodies on board, you're playing a bunch of Link 4s. This is really good, of course, to break boards, but you're playing a bunch of Link 4s here to help you just, you know, in this case, you're you're going for like, you know, the, the first turn negates. In this case, you're trying to sculpt your hand, get rid of extra names that you don't need, put them back into your deck. This helps you combo as well. So all of these cards here are just other combo pieces. This, if you need to get an extra level three in the graveyard, because you play two level threes in the deck, you're playing Amethyst as well as Turtle. So you can always make this to send the extra names so that you have all the names that you need. The Cross Sheep is really powerful because you can summon your Rainbow Dragon to Cross Sheep and then you make this into the Over Dragon or this guy over here. And then you get Cross Sheep effect. You can summon back at level four. 
etc etc so cross shape is a really good combo piece one ip and one unicorn sometimes you can end your boards on ip with like cross sheep and then you can go into either unicorn or apple on your opponent's turn which is really powerful and then we're playing some Ixies monsters these are just kind of like toolbox cards so lightning chidori tornado dragon dugaris as well as baguska i think that's pretty self-explanatory not too much to explain here i don't like playing the zeus because all of these cards are detaching for their effect so i know some people like to play the zeus but i just never found a situation where zeus will ever come up because even if you were able to Zeus, you don't really have materials for it to go off. So I'm not playing the Zeus. Technically, you can play the Zeus over the Tornado Dragon or over the Lightning Shidori. But um, yeah, that's it for the extra deck. So quickly, let me show you guys a quick side deck that I put together. Um, this one I'm not going to go too much in depth with. Uh, three Gamma Seal, three Nibiru, and three Evenly. These are for going second. Uh, you can play these inside, um, you know, depending on uh, what the format or the matchup you're going into, I should say. Because in back row matchups, that is kind of like a struggle. So that's why Evenly is there. Speaking of back row matchups, uh, we're playing two Cosmic Cyclones, one of the Harpies. I really like playing Cosmics, the Quick Plays, as well as the Evenlies, because this deck does lose pretty hard to Anti-Spell, because all of your consistency is spell cards. So you don't want to lose something like Anti-Spell, which is actually pretty prominent in today's format. So for that reason, Evenly Cosmics make a lot of sense, in my opinion. And then lastly, for going first, when you are, like, you know, game three, you want to go first again. You side in Judgments, you side out cards like Droplet and whatnot because Judgment just makes it so that your board is unbreakable. So yeah, the side deck, keep in mind, I'm always gonna say this in every single one of my videos. The side deck is always gonna be built based off of your locals. So if your locals is all Kosh Turret players, your locals is all branded players, you build your side deck based off of that. This side deck here kind of just covers a little bit of everything. So uh, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. That's Crystal Beast, that's Overdrive Turbo. It's so crazy that these GX decks in today's format are actually getting really powerful, especially because they're so old. But I think they did a really good thing with Crystal Beast and I think they were able to make the deck viable and really playable and really fun at that. So uh, thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you Alpha again for letting me use your house. I'm gonna be honest, I'm getting really hot in here. Yeah, that's all I gotta say. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you with that. Peace.